jump right in and begin with our keynote speaker to get us thinking about this topic, Dr. Sarah Brady. Dr. Brady serves as the Deputy Director of the California Council on Science and Technology, where she leads the outreach and collaboration efforts to connect CCST's network of science and tech experts with state policymakers. And we're so happy to have Dr. Brady here. So I'll just turn it right over to her. I'm the Deputy Director of CCST. So I had an opportunity to improve the system um, for those that came after me. So uh, in particular, related to family leave or lack thereof for graduate students and postdocs. And so fast forward to when I finished my PhD and accepted the CCST Science Policy Fellowship. Um, as Morgan said, I worked for then assembly member Susan Bonilla. And so I had to pull together a, a pitch essentially for the assemblywoman. I wanted her to focus her efforts with this bill on just one part of the pipeline, right? Graduate students and postdocs. So how do we get more women to finish their PhD and then keep their interest in, in staying in academia and eventually moving on to tenured faculty? We focused on the federal Title IX policies which require gender equity in every educational program that receives federal funding. And so it required institutions to maintain a student's place in their graduate program if they took a leave. It required the programs to reasonably accommodate pregnant students. Most importantly, an extension of time for when grad students had to pass their qualifying exams and for the total amount of time that they had to complete their entire master's or PhD program. We were able to do it together, essentially, and it was wonderful to bring a problem that I had been talking about for many years with many different female scientists, um, but we never considered a policy solution to the problem. And so getting the opportunity to move into the policy world and really realizing the opportunity that was there was just amazing. It's nice to have everyone back. Now we're going to ask groups to share with us a quick summary of your group's discussion. Let's we thought that that this should be kind of required viewing and that movies like this and documentaries like this carry much more weight than the required trainings that we're forced to go through um, because they're they're real human stories and they're not a box check and they resonate. I think there's a need for faculty also acknowledging that they are part of the problem. I think they also need to be part of the solution. Uh, not just embrace mental health um, services, right, for grad students. We had some interesting um, suggestions around policy. So um, one of them really stems from our discussion of identity, and it was the idea that um, perhaps one way to make STEM more inclusive um, is to um, incorporate fully and um, require that ways of knowing and the history of the development of ways of knowing from non-Western STEM should be part of the curriculum. So for instance, indigenous knowledge should be something that we learn about routinely um, and that will perhaps open us up to other identities. Um, it triggered emotions of anger, uh, of dread, um, shock, uh, but at the same time we had some uh, feelings of encouragement and also pride towards these women who were clearly very resilient in times that you know are very challenging as we all know that academic careers can be. Uh, maybe we need to look at scientific societies um, and look at them um, as enablers of some of this bad behavior. We all need to have a common system of values if we all want to subscribe to a cultural shift. But that in itself is the issue. So we look at the institution, the funding agencies, the, um, the societies that we belong to. Like Leticia and many of the other uh, moderators, many of the points that have been made have already been stated. But because one of the things that is kind of being implicitly stated here, and we're talking about implicit associations, right, is that we all have these biases. And how do we address them? I think 
one of the things that came out is that we have, Leticia was talking about values, right? Our morals. So we should ensure that even though we're all biased, we have a personal duty and a collective duty to identify when they're actually violating any moral principle and ensure that that's not occurring. This policy so itself may or may not work or people may be hesitant to um, take advantage of those policies, but a culture change uh, would, would be extremely helpful in those, in those situations. So. There was this quote from the movie, a ton of feathers is still a ton. What we really need to tackle are these power imbalances, um, not just you know in California, but sort of nationally across the community. Um, and that the power imbalance isn't just one of the dynamic, but also financial um, and, and socially. And so all of these different um, you know, facets uh, that impact uh, um, women's journey into, into science. And thank you, Annabelle. And thank you to all of our moderators for facilitating that very quick discussion. I know, but hopefully we're all able to